Hello, this is Pamela. Welcome to my channel. Grab you a cup of coffee, sit back and relax, and enjoy some good old yarny talk. Hello, this is Pamela, and you're on Pamela's Adoring Crochet. Welcome to my channel. And uh, today's video, I would like to just share a few tips that I have learned over uh, the past year. <laughs> okay, so um, the first thing that I would like to show is whenever I first started this, this YouTube channel, and um, be up until that point, I had just been uh, crocheting just a few little items here and there, little small things, no wearables, uh, you know, no shawls, scarves, hats. Well, I did do some hats, but they were the simple double crochet um, every row, and then that's basically it. Um, and then I start, and then I started doing the doll clothes, and that's where things really. <laughs> kind of went from there is the dog clothes so the thing few things that I learned along the way and one of them is I kept hearing this word blocking and I had no idea what people were talking about and so I had to research it and so uh, one thing I want to show is blocking um, a tip or and or whatever it means I guess um, the first thing is like I I crocheted this towel this washcloth and I wanted this to um you know to take a photo of it it's going to be a dish cloth um a dish rag and it is um I'm going to do a tutorial on it but I had to block it for the photos <laughs> so it would you know be nice and smooth and straight for my photos it did it did not have to be blocked but um this is just an example and I wish I had one unblocked but I don't but uh, you can buy these pet boards right here these foam boards um i bought mine on sale at michael's but um i'm sure other stores craft stores probably sell them as well uh you i know that amazon sells them i did not buy all i mean as much as i thought i needed when i went to i'll show you this other project that i blocked but when i went to block it um i realized that i don't have enough of these um i think i bought 12 and if I were to do a scarf, I mean a shawl or, you know, a sweater or something like that, I'm going to need more. So, um, I'm going to, my next set will probably just be Amazon because they have some that actually come in a case that you can zip up and, you know, keep them all in. As of right now, mine are all loose. <laughs> but anyway, so you will need some of these um, foam boards right here. And... I got these off Amazon, but Michaels and stuff sells them as well. You will need these T-pins right here. And here is what you do. When you want to block something, you... And this is what I do. Everybody does differently, so I don't want to say what this is what you do. But this is what I do. Because everybody has different styles of what they do. So you would like put this on here like that and then stretch it where you want it to go and then you would put pins every so often and then you would stretch this. This has already been stretched so it's not a very good example for you but you would stretch this down and put your other pin and then put pins along the side and the same with that and then you get it nice and squared or whatever it is that you want it to be. Uh, if it's round, you'd get it nice and round, you know. But, um, and then what I do from here is I have a spray bottle that I just bought from Walmart and I fill it up with water and then I spray it down really good and make, you know, get it soaked. And I just let it sit um, until it dries. <laughs> you know, the depending on the yarn that you're working with, depends on how long it takes to dry. So, um, this one that I did, oh, and you can get these little magnetic cases. Well, uh, Dollar Tree does sell these, and I think you can get these on Amazon. I'm not really sure exactly where this one come from because um, it was given to me, but I did buy a couple from Walmart, and the lids don't, I mean, from Walmart, from the Dollar Tree, but the lid doesn't stay on as good. It's a loose lid, but the person that um, gave these to me, they uh, it was Dora. Thank you, Dora. And um, the lid stays on really good and tight. Let's see. 
I don't have to worry about my stuff falling out. Uh, the ones that I did buy from the Dollar Tree, the lids are loose. Now, the Dollar Tree may have some more of these uh, beer ones. The one I got was were smaller, and like I said, they they were not very good um, lid. But it just may have been the batch that the Dollar Tree had at the time. So, I'm like I said, I'm really not 100% sure where this came from because it was gifted to me. Um, but anyway, so... Um, the other thing is, you guys know that I had been working on this, and I had finished this a while back. Well, I went ahead, and I'm finished with the baby blanket. Um, I am not, there are a few more rows to add to it, but I'm done with it. I'm not doing any more. I think this is big enough. And um, it's supposed to have a green row here, a couple more rows of this, but the package doesn't come with any more of this. I mean, I've used it. There's just a tad bit left. And then you're supposed to have like four more rows of this. And then you're supposed to trim it in this cream again. There's no way there's even enough for all that. Uh, there is enough, I think, maybe for this. Yeah, I think there's enough to do this, possibly. And, and maybe one row of the green. But I think this is big enough for a little newborn. So I'm done with it. But here's my deal. I had to block this because it wanted where this is. It wanted to bunch up like this and so I blocked it I put it I put a whole bunch of these together see they have these little interlock pieces and so I put them all together and I laid this on it and then I just stretched it out I let it sit overnight got up this morning and it was already dry so I took my little T pins out of it and uh, and it straightened it up otherwise it was um, you know, it wanted to crunch up. So that's something that you can do um, when you have issues like that. And um, let's see. All right, so the next tip that I have is on amigurumi. Now, everybody has their own idea of how, of hooks, not their own idea. Everybody has their own preference of the hooks that they like to use when they crochet. Well, for amigurumi, I um, do something a little different with my hook. You would think that for amigurumi, you would need to make your stitches nice and tight, that you would want to use a metal hook. Well, I don't use metal hooks for my amigurumi, uh, unless I'm working on maybe a G size hook, I will. But if I'm using anything below a three, I will uh, go to plastic. Um, and here is why. Now I think he, I think this one was done with the plastic hook, and that one over there done with the plastic hook. These were done with plastic hooks. Um, here is a sample of what I'm talking about. This is one of those light up. I think it come from um, Amazon. But it's one of those light up ones. But the light up is not like what attracts me. I like this um, plastic hook. It's flexible. See that? And so it's easy for me to get it in and out of those tiny stitches that I'm having to make. Compared to this. It's stiff. It has no give to it. Um, this right here also. When I'm working with this. Well, I'm sorry. When I'm working with the metal, it tends to, when it grabs the yarn, it tends to sometimes grab um, some of the yarn and won't let go. When you go to pull it through to go do your next stitch, it will hold on kind of like it splits the yarn. And so I spend more time trying to get this out of the yarn to go to my next stitch. And I can use this and the plastic does not do that. Um, yet. <laughs> I've made quite a few amigurumis with plastic um, hooks. Um, I guess that's what you call that. I don't know, but it, it is flexible. Let's see. How can I show you that? Let's see. <laughs> see, it, it's flexible. And I have not had one to break on me yet, so I don't know like how long it may last. <laughs> I just know that I can crochet faster using these type of hooks 
for those projects. It's really the only thing I use these hooks for is for my amigurumi. Unless I'm somewhere um, and I'm starting a project and I do not have my favorite hooks around, you know, then I have, these are my backup ones. The bigger ones are my backup ones. But as far as my amigurumi using anything below a three, um, I run to this because of that. So if you're, if you are new at starting amigurumi and you're finding that when you crochet with these small hooks, that it is pulling, you pull up the yarn and then when you go do another one, sometimes it, it holds part of the yarn and splits it. A lot of times it's because it's not you, it's that metal that's, that, um, I mean, you can feel it, it's sharp. And so it grabs the yarn. This doesn't have that, see? There's, I, I don't feel anything sharp. These are like razor sharp. The smaller they get, they're razor sharp. So I guess razor, probably too bold of a word. I don't know, but they're sharp. <laughs> I don't think they can cut you, but they are sharp. And uh, the bigger hooks aren't like that. But the, the smaller hook you, the smaller you go in your hook, the sharper that end is. Okay, so that is another tip. And the other thing is, I know um, a lot of you guys know that I do a lot of amigurumis. Well, besides my uh, one that I did over this past Christmas, the nativity set, I use three weight yarn for that. But majority of time when I buy these books and I do the amigurumis in them, I always use medium full weight yarn. So a lot of times my animals will come out bigger than what the book says. But that's because I like the bigger animals. <laughs> that's my intentions is to get the bigger animals. Now, I will still go with the hooks that they recommend. Even for like this, I think calls for sport weight yarn. And I still use my... Um, medium full weight yarn in it, but I go with the 2.5 millimeter hook that they say. But you will also need to remember that when you're making these amigurumis and you do go up a yarn size, that when it calls for the eyes, you may need to go up the, like if it calls for 11 millimeter eyes, sometimes I will do the 13 or 15. Um, if it says 11, I might go up to like 12 something like just a couple of sizes bigger than what um, the eyes say so that my eyes can be proportioned to my bigger animal that I'm now making. <laughs> um, so that's another tip. Let's see. Um, okay, here's one. The um, I made this, and I'll show you. Well, I'll go ahead and show it to you. This is from Yarn Inspirations, this pattern. And I, when I saw this pattern, it's like I had to have it. It was a free pattern. But it, I mean, I felt like I had to do this. So, I made this last summer and I love this purse. I carry it a lot of places. I have not carried it in a while, but um, I do carry it in a lot of places. I did put a little handmade tag right here. Um, I put a button, let's see. I just happen to have, find a big wooden button like that. I normally don't have buttons that size. I did line mine on the inside and I did put pockets in it. But, um, okay, so what my tip is, oh, and this does take two skeins, I mean, two strands of yarn, so it's nice and thick. Um, I don't even know if I necessarily, yeah, I can see where I would have to have lining. I can kind of see through it. But it's, it's a stiff purse. It's not a flimsy purse. And it's, I think it's because it's Red Heart, Super Saver. And you know that, guys know that yarn is a little um, stiff anyway. Uh, it's not your softest yarn. So uh, putting the two colors together like they asked for, putting two strands together, made it nice and stiff. And so I really like that. All right, my tip for this is, um, I think it might have had a strap on it. I don't know. But I went and bought, I mean, I, I put my own strap on this. And I did this adjustable, you know, so that I could wear it like this. And then I could just adjust the strap. So let me ch tell you my, um, first I'm going to show you the pattern on here, okay? And then I'll show you my tip. Okay. Like here it is right there. And see, there's the straps that come with it. And it is a uh, yarn inspiration. It takes patty green yarn 
and um, teal leaf color and turka, which is, you know, turquoise. So those are the colors that it takes. And it uses a K hook. So you get to you get, uh, use a big hook for it. Let's see what the, okay, it's called Red Heart Trendy Tote Bag. See the title, Red Heart Trendy Tote Bag. Uh, so if you're interested in making this purse, then um, that's where you go to Yarn Inspirations. All right, so what I do for stuff like this is I go to like Goodwill, um, some of these flea market type places and I find purses. I don't care if the purse is ugly. If I like the strap, I'll buy the purse, 50 cents, a dollar, you know, stuff like that. And I will take the straps off, which is what I did to this. Um, and so I have a bag uh, that I keep a lot of my straps in. Um, oh, I should have pulled my other one out. But see, I make sure that they have these type on them so that I can crochet this into my bag. But like, here's a strap. See? And I just buy these purses and I cut them off the purses and throw the purse away. <laughs> um, here's another one. So you just need to make sure there's some kind of a piece like that on the end of them so that you can crochet them onto your project. But these are straps. Um, see this one I have, it had this kind of a, a strap on it or end on it. Um, so that is, oh yeah, and I have this kind too, in case you're interested in this kind. You know, it's just whatever, see, and this one's adjustable. I love this one, but it has those on the end of it so that you can um, crochet them onto your project. So that's just an idea. I don't know if any of you have thought of that. Um, here's another one. But I pay like... Um, 50 cents, a dollar, and just depending on the strap itself, um, you know, I may pay, oh, I don't think I pay more than a dollar fifty, um, because, you know, it's just the strap I'm wanting, not the purse. So, even if the purse has stains on it or whatever, um, you know, just buy it and throw it away. Just cut off the strap, you know, the handle, <laughs> strap handle. So, okay, let's see. I think that's all of my tips that I have today. Um, yeah, that's all that I have to share with you. Um, here is, we're going to do our 365 days of prayer. Um, it says, prone to wander. Lord, I know that people's lives are not their own. It is not for them to direct their steps. Jeremiah 10, 23. God, how wonderful it is to follow you. I don't have to know where I'm going or worry about leading anyone onto the wrong path. There is such freedom in knowing you know exactly where I need to go and you will do everything necessary to get me there. Even if I wander, and we both know I will, your brilliant light will show me the way back. Shine brightly, Lord, so brightly I can't possibly miss you. I'm prone to wander and stubborn enough to want to make my own way sometimes. Help me follow willingly, God, so that anyone looking to me for direction will not miss you either. How are you following God's footsteps for your life? Okay, um, I, guys, I hope that uh, some of these little tips uh, will help you if you were new to this. Like, I mean, I'm pretty new. It's been a year and a half now. I'm working on my second. This October will be my second year. And so I'm still learning a lot of things myself. And I just wanted to get on here and just share um, just a few tips. I do have more. I'll just put those in another video. But um, so anyway, I hope I have, have helped you guys. And uh, please like, share, and subscribe if you'd like. I'd appreciate that. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.